difficult and, and I guess challenging and perhaps threatening to both ph some philosophers as well as theologians is this question of something from nothing. As it happens in the case, as, as I think we've talked about before, in biology. I mean, how do you get life from non-life? That was originally sort of the, the main theological question. How do you get life from non-life? And, and, and even in the original version of, of Darwin's book, he, he says at the very end, God breathed life into the first species because... Only it, in the first edition. If, in, only in the first edition. Uh, in, in second edition, he leaves out God. Um, oh, no, the other, other, other way around. Sorry. Yeah, he in put the, it back in, in because the, that's in the, right. in the first edition, there's no mention of God. He says, originally breathed. And then in the second edition and subsequent editions, he says, by the, by the creator. But that's a much easier problem in a way because you're starting with chemistry. You start from mo molecules bumbling around in the, in the warm little pond, as Darwin called it, primeval soup, as people later called it. And, and then you get the first self-replicating molecule. But something from nothing, from literally nothing, and that's what really gets people. That's the one that's really counter to common sense. And, and, and they clearly misunderstand what you mean by nothing. So and, and it, well, exactly, and, 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 I'm off, and the problem is I'm often accused of not talking about the nothing that classical philosophers 2,000 years ago or theologians talked about, and the difficult, and, and I guess challenge. What a mystery it is. The world is full of mysteries. Despite centuries of scientific breakthroughs, the big mysteries have not been resolved by science. Why is there something rather than nothing? No answer. Why is there life and not just death? No answer. How did the first cell emerge? The very first cell, and every single cell in our bodies, and there are billions of cells in each of our bodies, it's a miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Each one of those cells came about through the division of another cell, and that came about through the division of another cell right back to an unimaginable past, and some scientists say maybe four billion years ago. But how did that start? How out of the dark dumbness of matter did the miracle of life emerge? The lipids necessary for the creation of the boundary around the first cell, how did that happen? The proteins, how did that happen? The sugars necessary for the energy processes within the cell, where did they come from? The capacity of the very first cell to divide itself into two further cells that would then be the ancestors of all subsequent cells how did that happen? The scientists can't even define life. Is the coronavirus alive? Don't know. Or is it just some strange way for replicating a, a gene? Don't know. The basic questions they don't know. There's more than 130 different scientific definitions for life, which means they don't know. How did it start? How is it possible? How is it so sustainable? Why is it so beautiful? Don't know, don't know, don't know. And then the mystery, which is the supreme mystery of life, which is consciousness, akhal, the human being. Unlike any other order of creation, one trillion species on the earth, they say one of them is this supreme mystery. This mystery that can indeed listen when the creator says, Qad man He who purifies himself has succeeded. No other animal can do that. They are animals, beautiful, perfect in their place as umam, as nations like yourselves, but they can't really take these decisions to say, I will not eat. I will overcome appetite. Why? Because I hope for the iftar, and I hope for the iftar in the presence of the chosen one in the Jannah, and for that I will forsake my eating and drinking. Out of those one trillion species, only one can do that. What is that miracle? The miracle of consciousness, of mind, of morality, of choice. That's the deepest miracle of all. But his matrix is a matrix of life. Without life, that can hardly exist. So we find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regularly alerts us in his book to this mystery of life. He is Muhyi al mawta the one who will give life to the death. يُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ وَيُخْرِجُ الْمَيِّتَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ He takes the living out of the dead and takes the dead out of the living. There is this great cycle. The atoms from which we composed were once part of rocks and clouds and water and something else. And now through his wisdom, 
in his organizing of the laws of this creation, they come together to form our extraordinary, unlikely selves. <coughs> and then they will vanish again on our death, and we will be returned to the earth once again. This is the cycle. <coughs> Except for that miracle, which is not part of the cells or the atoms within us, which is the miracle of consciousness and knowledge and ruh. Ah, that supreme miracle. That miracle goes on. So we find ourselves in a scientific age that's also an age of ignorance. Where do we come from? Where does the world come from? What is the basis of matter? Where are these physical laws from? Where is life from? Where is consciousness from? Don't know, don't know, don't know, don't know. That is not the place we look to for answers. But the Quran, this beautiful celestial song, this harmonious rhythm, which we lose ourselves in rapture in during the nights of Tarawih, this extraordinary Taratil, uh, says yes, yes, yes. The only coherent explanation to all of these is Allah, 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 Allah. And we have answers. And the answers are deep and apply to the heart. And the answers is what allow us to see the world and to see its beauty and to see in the world the beauty of al-hay, al-qayyum, the alive, the self-sustaining, the miracle of al-muhi, that alone seems to apply to the miracle of this planet, which is the sole habitat for human beings. Poor old Mr. Musk, 